Greetings and welcome to today's lesson. In today's lesson, we are going to start on page 151 and we are in chapter 6, Compound Verbs. So you'll see what we learned last chapter with compound subjects will be very similar to what we're going to do in this chapter with compound verbs. Let's begin by reading. When you think of a thunderstorm, flashes of lightning and booms of thunder are probably the first things that come to your mind. Did you know that lightning and thunder actually happen at the same time? A bolt of lightning, which is more than 40,000 degrees Fahrenheit, heats the air around it, causing the air to expand quickly. Thunder is the result of the rapid expanding and contracting of the atmosphere that is caused by the bolt of lightning. The two events happen at the same time, but light travels faster than sound. In other words, you see the lightning before you hear the thunder. In an English sentence, when one thing, a subject, does two or more actions, he ha has two verbs, those actions are called a compound verb. Sometimes writers many, use many subjects with only one verb, a compound subject. And sometimes writers use one subject with many verbs, a compound verb. Either way, a compound elements, the compound elements, are joined together with conjunctions. A compound verb gives you the power to describe vividly with multiple action words that midnight storm that once woke you up with a jolt. The terrible tempest flashed and rumbled, right? So tempest being a fancy word for storm, the storm flashed and rumbled, lightning and thunder. Now ideas to understand. When two or more verbs are joined with a conjunction and have the same subject, they are called a compound verb. In Rupert Kipling's story, How the Whale Got His Throat, two verbs, swam and swam, are joined with a conjunction and together they form a compound verb. Now, let's look at page 152. So here is a slight part of that story. So the whale swam and swam to latitude 50 north, longitude 40 west, as fast as he could swim and on a raft in the middle of the sea with nothing to wear except a pair of blue canvas breeches. A pair of suspenders. You must particularly remember the suspenders, best beloved, and a jackknife. He found one single solitary shipwrecked mariner traveling his, or trailing his toes in the water. Kipling doubles his verb and uses a long sentence to describe the great distance the whale swam. He didn't just swim, he swam and swam. Kipling's compound verb is unusual because it is the same word repeated twice. Compound verbs are often two different verbs, or even more than two verbs. In the sentence, the whale swam, dove, and fished. The subject is whales, and three verbs, swam, dove, and fished, connected by a conjunction, form the compound verb. Just as in any other sentence, subjects and compounds must, verbs must, agree in number. The whale swims and swims, but whales swim and swim. The singular subject whale agrees with singular verbs swims and swims. The plural subject whales agrees with the plural verbs swim and swim. The verbs in a compound verb also can be separated by more than just a conjunction. Sometimes a direct object or even a prepositional phrase can separate the verbs. Take a look at the following examples. With a conjunction, 
the whale swims in spurts water with a direct object and conjunction. The whale spurts water and splashes the dolphins with a direct object, conjunction, and prepositional phrase. The whale spurts water into the air and splashes the dolphins nearby. So notice here, we have a conjunction on this one. Swim and spurts, right? There's our predicate verbs right next to the conjunction. Here, we have a direct object in the middle. So here's our predicate verb. And here's our predicate verb. Notice there's this distance now between them. And then here, we have even more in between it. Spurts is my predicate verb, and splashes is my predicate verb. But notice, splashes water, right? There's my conjunction into the air, telling us where it spurts. Splashes, splashes what? The dolphins, where are the dolphins nearby, right? So it gets further and further away, right? But we, might, we are good at finding our action verbs, so I think we'll be okay. Now, a compound verb can also, uh, a compound verb can include helping verbs too. If the compound verb includes only one helping verb, there is an implied helping verb for the second one, second verb. For instance, consider the following sentence. The whale is swimming and spurting water. The helping verb is assists both verbs to complete their meaning. So we could say, the whale is swimming and is spurting water. Now, we don't usually double that word. It just assume that is is working for both of those. The author is really saying that the whale is swimming and is spurting water. But the helping verb does not need to be repeated. All right. Now, let's go ahead and turn all the way to page 156. And let's do some practice. Now here, we're going to practice some sentences on which we are going to add in an additional um, additional predicate verb, right? So the birds, so the spring birds chirped and what? We could say and called to one another. Now notice here, this is in the past tense, so we should use past tense here. Joyously, the flowers grew and what? And bloomed. All right. Again, grew is in the past tense. Right. And so this is. Now, on April 6th, a storm drenched and blank the ground. Right. We'll use the, the conjunction and. Now, you can go ahead and use your own. And so what might be a word that you could use, right? What does a storm do to the ground? A number of words you can use. You could say that it saturated the ground. You could say that it flooded the ground. I'm going to use the word froze. But you're welcome to use any word that you would like, as long as it makes sense. And it should be in the past tense. In the garden, the crocus flowers wilted and, uh, what do you think they might do? Well, when something wilts, it usually dies. So we're going to put died in the past tense because wilted is in the past tense. Now, let's look at page 157. Here, we're going to analyze some sentences. Again, we're going to use basically the same skill set that we use for compound subjects, but here for compound verbs. So let's look at this sentence together. On the tent, oh, sorry, outside the tent, Lucy watched and pondered the distant stars. Right? Now, what is the action taking place here? Well, there's two things, right? She watched, right? So that's a pretty good verb. And she pondered. Right? She thought about the stars. Right? A good verb. And here, we're being joined together by this conjunction and. And we're going to use that same symbol that we've already been practicing. Right? The greater than, the less than sign. Now, who did the watching and the pondering? Yeah, Lucy. Lucy's the subject. 
Now, did she watch and ponder something? Was there something receiving that action? Yeah, stars. But that is my direct object. Now, do I have a preposition? I do have a preposition. I, I have a preposition. I want to deal with that since I'm done with the direct object. And then my preposition is outside. It tells us where something is happening. Outside the what? Outside the tent. Okay. But I need to find the first noun or pronoun. And the is an article adjective, which we know well. Right? A, D, J. Again, this is telling us where she did the watching and the pondering. So what we're going to do here is we're not going to draw it to both of them. We'll draw it to the one that is, um, I think we'll draw it to the one that is closest to it, right? So we'll just understand that both of these actions are taking place outside the tent. Watching and pondering. So I'm just going to draw it here. So it's an adverbial prepositional phrase, right? So we dealt with all of that. Now let's go back. Distant is telling me what? Now it's telling me what kind of stars does an article adjective. So both of these are adjectives modifying stars. A, D, J, A, D, J, right? This is an article adjective. So it always modifies the noun or pronoun that follows it. And distant is telling us what kind of stars. Not the stars that are close, but the ones that are distant. So not the sun. The one that's far away. All right. Now let's look at this one. Under the night sky, Theo stretched and yawned loudly. Right? So what is the, um, the action here? The action is stretched and yawned. Right? Now who did that stretching and yawning? It was Theo. So that's my subject. And we have this conjunction. Let's go ahead and use our greater than or less uh, greater than and less than sign to join that together. Now, do we have an, a direct object? Is there something that is being stretched and yawned? No. No, nothing's receiving that action. He's doing the stretching and yawning, but nothing's receiving that action. So let's now go to our uh, prepositions. Do we have any prepositions? We do. Under is a preposition. Now here. Under what? Under the? No. Under night? The night is a noun, but here night is acting as an adjective. It's describing sky, so that's my object of the preposition. So here, the is modifying sky. That always modifies the next noun, and night is telling me what kind of sky. So both of these are adjectives. ADJ, ADJ. Right? Again, make, stay, make sure you're staying uh, refreshed on knowing what adjectives are. Adjectives tell us what kind, which one, how many, and whose. Now, under the sky, what is that telling me? It's telling me where this stretching and yawning took place. And we're just going to go to the one that's closest to it. So we have an adverbial, ADV, prepositional phrase. Loudly. Right. What is loudly telling us? It's telling us how something was done. Now, in this case, you wouldn't really stretch loudly, but you would yawn loudly. Right. So we're going to do this right here and carry it over. And it is an adverb. It's telling us how something was done. There is a clue that it's an adverb. What's that clue? The clue is it ends in ly. Right. Not all words in an ly that, but there's a good indicator. All right, let's look at the light page 158. Again, we're analyzing here. So now I want you to try to analyze this sentence on your own. Do your best, and then when you come back, we'll look at it together. Go ahead and pause the video now. All right, so here it says four girls wrapped and stacked the birthday gifts. So what is the action of this sentence? The action is the wrapping and stacking, okay? Predicate verb, predicate verb, and I have my conjunction right there, easy to find. So let's go ahead and mark it like that. Now, who did the wrapping and the stacking? And it was the girls. So that's my subject. Now, do we have a direct object? Is there something that's receiving the action of being wrapped and stacked? We do. 
gifts. So that is my direct object. Now, birthday is a noun, right? It's a, it's a time, it's an idea, it's a thought, it's abstract. But here, we know that it's modifying gifts, as long as well as the, which is an article adjective, which always modifies the next one. So here we have a, d, j, a, d, j. Okay, telling us what kind of gifts these are. They're not just any kind of gifts, they are birthday gifts. We already did our conjunction. Now we have four. What is four telling us? Yeah, it's telling us how many girls, and that is an adjective. A, D, J. Adjectives tell us what kind, which one, how many, and whose. All right, now let's look at sentence four, or sentence B, rather. Okay, so sentence B, let's go ahead and have you do that one independently. And then when you're ready, come back and we'll review it together. Go ahead and pause the video now. All right, so let's look at this together. So here, the older boys swept and cleaned the den for the party. All right, so what is the action taking place? Yeah, in this sentence, it is the sweeping and the cleaning that is taking place. Predicate verb, predicate verb. I have my conjunction here, so let's go ahead and use our greater than and less than signs to mark that. Now, who did the um, did the sweeping and the cleaning? The boys. So that's my subject. All right. Now, is there something that received the action of being cleaned? Yeah, the den was cleaned. So that's my direct object. And now, do we have a preposition? So we do have a preposition, the word for. And what is the first noun or pronoun that comes after it? Yeah, party is the is an article adjective. So we can do here, we can do object of preposition, and then let's go ahead and mark this one as an adjective, because it is an article adjective, A, D, J. All right, now, um, what is this telling me for the party? It's telling us why, or how, rather, the cleaning and the sweeping and the cleaning happened, right? Now, we could say that they swept and cleaned. They did both of these things for the party. But we're only going to draw the arrow to the one that is closest to it, okay? So here, how did they sweep and clean? They swept and cleaned for the party. Okay. And so. A D V adverbial prepositional phrase P R E P. The is an article adjective modifying the den A D J. Now we have older and the. What are those? Yeah, article adjective and older is telling us what kind of boys both of these are adjectives A D J A D J. All right, so C and D, you'll do these two for independent practice. So you'll do these on your own. Now let's look at number two. So imagine how difficult people and animal, or sorry, imagine how different people and animals walk. With that in mind, write the following sentences using synonyms for the word walk. All right, so what might be... Um, be another way of talking about it, we could say, um, we could say, uh, ran, galloped, but let's use the word skip, okay? So let's write a sentence about the girl. The carefree girl skipped Back to the car. All right, so here we're just using a different word to describe it here. And because she skipped, we use the word carefree to, act, to modify girl to show that she is doing it without a care in the world, just skipping along back to the car. All right, let's look at page 159. Write a sentence about a poodle walking. 
right? So imagine that this poodle is racing, right? The little poodle is racing about. Okay, so it's running around as fast as it can. So on this one, write a, si a sentence about a scientist walking. You can make your own sentence. So that would be part of your independent practice. So you can use your own sentence in which you just create a new word for walking, right? So it's a different word you could use for walking or running, moving of legs to move yourself um, to make that sentence a little bit more exciting, right? Okay, well, that is the end of our lesson for today. I hope you have a terrific day, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.